Being a sidekick is maybe even harder than being a superhero. You have all the same fights, all the bruises, the trauma, and the sleep deprivation and suffering, but also you get basically none of the respect, which makes the whole thing suck even more. Also, if you're a Robin starting out, you're generally around 12 years old, which also means your ability to gauge whether your actions are wrong or right aren't totally honed yet, opening up the floor for some super questionable scenarios. All this combined serves to create a situation where it is simply inevitable that each and every Robin has done at minimum one terrible thing in their vigilante career, if not many, many more. So, in the spirit of, well, looking at the worst things Robin has ever done, I'm Ewan from What Culture Comics, and here are the 10 worst things Robin has ever done. Number 10, Damien Gets Gotham Nuked. Of all the various imaginings of a future Gotham, the single wildest has to be that of the one we are shown towards the end of 2013's Batman Incorporated number 5. In it, we see a future where Damien has become Batman, and Talia has used this to orchestrate an elaborate plan that results in the entirety of Gotham being nuked by its president. While Damien is unaware of his mother's machinations, the fact that Gotham has become a hellhole in the time between Bruce being Batman and him suggests some pretty telling things about the way the young Robin could have worked as a legitimate superhero. More importantly, this scenario only exists in a universe where Damien goes against his father's wishes and becomes Batman before he is properly ready, so there's also a solid level of blame for him in that regard, as much as it is mainly his mother's fault. But insofar as getting people hurt, Damien in this future is responsible for the deaths of the entirety of Gotham and its surrounding area, which is sure to be a pretty high number and therefore a pretty sketchy move. Number 9. Jason Todd Sleeps with Talia al Ghul of Jason Todd's various plans to get back at Batman over the years, few have been as worrying or as genuinely messed up as when these plans led him to sleeping with Bruce's long-term love interest, Talia al Ghul. Worse yet, the first few issues of the comic where this is shown, under the equally questionable name of Red Hood Lost Days, show Talia's fairly maternal relationship with Batman's old sidekick and the guidance she gave him when she and her father brought him back from the dead, giving the whole thing an extra level of awfulness. Number 8. Duke Thomas Hides His Superpowers Perhaps the single most surprising detail of the Collective Dark Knight series was somehow almost entirely unrelated to the events of the main plot, as in Dark Days the casting, we learn that Batman's newest protege, Duke Thomas, has a series of secret superpowers, something that we later discovered that Duke had suspected but had never thought to actually mention to anyone. It's slightly unfair to say that Thomas was actively attempting to hide the fact he was a metahuman, as in all due fairness, a teenager telling Batman they feel weird or different is maybe more likely to get fatherly advice on growing up than anything else. More importantly, Duke does work for the goddamn Batman, so of course it turns out Bruce has been keeping tabs on his new ward's potential powers since recruiting him. But given that it has been suggested that Duke may actually be immortal, it might have been nice if the sidekick had thought to have an actual chat with the one person who would be able to shed some light on everything, instead of waiting for it to be brought to everyone's attention just as the world is coming to an end. Number 7. Damien Kills Nobody when you're trained by an extremist terrorist organization owned by your grandfather since the moment you were born up until three days before you became a superhero, it's sort of inevitable that the process from killing everyone to absolutely no one has to have some difficulties. Which may explain why Damien tries to take a shortcut by technically killing nobody, but actually killing nobody. The supervillain who had been trying to recruit Damien to murder his father since the beginning of the New 52 Batman and Robin. It's more than easy to understand why Damien kills him. The man is literally threatening to kill everyone Damien has ever cared about, and the younger Wayne still has years of murderous instincts built up inside him. But that doesn't change the fact that he does it right after him and his father have a bonding moment over how the new Robin is beginning to outgrow his vicious upbringing. It's a bad moment, but perhaps a needed one, as it marks both Batman and Robin trying to understand each other better, which also leads to the improved Damien we know and love today. Number 6. Stephanie Brown Starts a Gang War Semi-Accidentally While Stephanie Brown is arguably one of the more heroically intentioned Robins, this doesn't always equal her doing no wrong. This is best shown in Batman The 12 Cent Adventure, where we see Steph accidentally provoke a fight during negotiations that include Deadshot, Ventriloquist, Catman, and the Penguin, to name but a few. This fight begins the gang war that runs through the Batman War Games series and makes Stephanie indirectly responsible for a whole lot of deaths, due to the fact she wasn't aware that the figure who was meant to unite the gangs, Natchez Malone, was also Batman. Initiating the war game without the Dark Knight's knowledge meant that it didn't succeed, resulting in a devastating war that ravages Gotham for several years. 
Now, now, Stephanie did mean well, and that is the crux of why she can't be considered evil for starting off war games. But the blame does also squarely lie on her shoulders, and as such, it has to be remembered that she could have told Batman about her plan at any time, but instead commits to carrying out a plot that has some very real potential to go terribly, terribly wrong. Number 5. Jason Todd Beats Up Tim Drake For No Good Reason the one redeeming quality about the vast majority of the terrible actions and decisions of the various Robins over the years is that they at least generally have some justifications for them, be it beating down a villain who had done something terrible or doing something they thought was the right thing that later turned out not to be. Jason Todd's no-holds-barred brutalization of the younger Robin, Tim Drake, however, is precisely none of those things. Todd has no reason to hurt Tim aside from his own rage over feeling forgotten by the people who were close to him, and even then, the person he should be fighting over that isn't his replacement, but his mentor, meaning Drake is in every sense undeserving of the ordeal Jason puts him through. While Jason has done a whole lot of pretty bad stuff in his history, the vast majority have been done because Todd thought they needed to be done. Not only did beating Tim Drake up unquestionably not need to be done, but it also definitely made the pair working together later on way more awkward than it ever needed to be. Number 4. Dick Grayson Murders the Joker The death of Jason Todd served as pretty much a catalyst for a whole lot of heroes to consider killing the Joker in revenge. While Nightwing is one of the less violent members of the Bat family, he was also perhaps the closest to Jason bar Batman himself when Jason died, and as such, was understandably out for blood about the whole affair. This serves to explain why, when Grayson thinks the villain has killed Tim Drake in Joker Last Laugh, he immediately begins a murderous takedown of the clown, which culminates in his death. Sure, Nightwing tries not to kill him at the last second, but only because he sees a very alive Tim Drake coming towards him, and even then, the hero has done too much damage for the Joker to survive anyway. The team managed to resuscitate the Clown Prince, but this doesn't change the fact that, for a good couple minutes, Dick had killed him, all angst and guilt aside. Number 3. Tim Drake lets a serial killer become Batman If there's only one universal constant, it's that Tim Drake always means to do the right thing. As far as intentions go, Drake is pretty much the golden standard in terms of sidekicks with morals, which makes it all the more surprising in the instances where he totally disregards them. The most unusual case of this has to be in Batman number 500, halfway through the Night Quest storyline, where, after spending almost the entire first half of the series warning everyone about Batman's temporary replacement, Jean-Paul Valley, he decides that Jean isn't so bad, after seeing him not kill one supervillain one singular time. In doing so, Tim totally ignores the entire sea of red flags that Valley had been throwing up, and instead loses a lunatic onto the streets of Gotham in the armor of its protector. Now, to be fair, the odds of Tim Drake being able to beat Jean Paul are reasonably slim to none, but that doesn't mean that the sidekick had to actively sign off on a known murderer, taking the mantle of a hero who's supposed to be opposed to murder in all its forms. Number 2. Dick Grayson Cheats on His Fiance with the relationship between Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson being one that developed slowly from when the pair began working together when they were young, it's only natural that they've had some ups and downs here and there, and that some of these would involve them making the kind of sketchy decisions that people still learning about the world and themselves are prone to do. However, the absolute worst of these happens when the pair are adults, as Dick's reunion with Barbara after she was paralyzed by the Joker is maybe the first Robin's most morally questionable moment to date. After the pair reunite, they share a night together, and then the following morning Dick hands her a letter, inviting her to his wedding with Starfire. It's not only a complete punch in the face to Barbara, who is understandably heartbroken, but also to Starfire, as he literally cheats on her while thinking about their engagement. Number 1. Tim Drake stalks and attempts to murder Captain Boomerang in a comic that provides concrete proof that all Robins are a stone's throw away from becoming DC's answer to the Punisher, Tim Drake goes full murder mode in Red Robin number 26, stalking Captain Boomerang and fantasizing about killing him the whole time. While Drake eventually does let Boomerang live, it's only after endangering his life several times and then actively placing him in a situation where he could have died without the Red Robin's help. It's the most paltry kind of assistance, and the whole thing only serves to leave him in hot water with Batman after all is said and done. As much as Drake's actions aren't without justification, I mean, Boomerang did kill his dad after all, Drake knows his father would have wanted Boomerang taken in lawfully, instead of punished by Tim's own hand. With this in mind, the more questionable part of the Robin's behavior is the fact that he clearly wanted to hurt the villain for his own personal sense of vengeance, and so it's a relief he leaves it at merely stalking and naming him instead. And that was our list on the 10 worst things Robin has ever done. Please report your own bad Robin stories in the comments below so we can finally put a stop to this bird theme menace. And, you know, give us a like, a share, and maybe a subscribe too if you're feeling generous. 
I've been Ewan. Catch more articles like this on whatculture.com forward slash comics. Keep supporting your local comic book store while you're at it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!